Hi guys, and welcome back to another video. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you five great ways to make your server more secure. Let's get started. Making your server more secure, also known as server hardening, is basically trying to reduce the number of exposed surfaces on your server. This means that you have to tighten up security rules to make sure that your data or your service won't be compromised in an attack. There are many great ways to harden your server against attacks, and most of them can be implemented through a few simple commands or even through a GUI. Today, I'll be showing you five of the best ways to harden your server on both Ubuntu and Red Hat based systems, along with a few other tips and tricks. The first thing you should implement is a properly configured firewall. While it may seem like a very simple thing to do, maintaining a good firewall is one of the most overlooked parts of server hardening. First of all, what exactly does a firewall do? Well, a firewall can block or drop connections on certain network ports. A good firewall should be set to block or simply ignore connections to unneeded ports. This way, only the services or ports that need to communicate on the network can communicate. On many Linux distributions, the firewall is installed but not enabled by default, so it has to be manually activated. On a Ubuntu-based system, type sudo ufw allow openssh so that your SSH connection isn't blocked, and then type sudo ufw enable to enable your firewall. Now, to allow ports through the firewall, use the basic syntax of sudo ufw allow port slash protocol. For example, if you wanted to allow port 443 for HTTPS, you could type sudo ufw allow 443 slash tcp. On a Red Hat based system, firewall configuration is much simpler thanks to the built-in cockpit utility. To access the cockpit management interface, visit your server IP colon 9090 in your web browser. Then sign in with your user account and password on your server. After entering the management interface, navigate to the networking tab and click on firewall. To allow a port or a service through the firewall, simply click on add services and choose a service or a port to add. The firewall isn't something you can just set and forget though. As you add or remove services, you must stay vigilant and add or remove those ports as well, so that you minimize the number of exposed ports and prevent unwanted traffic. Often, security updates contain important fixes to either the Linux kernel or to critical system utilities and services that are essential to the function of your server. Security updates may also contain things like microcodes, which are re released to combat specific attacks like Spectre and Meltdown. Because security updates are so crucial, it's important to regularly install them manually or even configure automatic security updates. Additionally, automatic updates give you additional peace of mind and reduce time spent on making sure updates are installed. To configure automatic updates on Ubuntu, you can use the apt unattended upgrades package. To install it, type the command shown. After it's finished installing, make sure it's running by typing systemctl status unattended upgrades. If it says active running, you're good to go. We can now choose which repositories to enable automatic updates for. To do this, open the file path shown on screen with your favorite text editor. Personally, I use Vim. Uncomment the line ending in security to enable auto updates for the security repository. If you want to enable auto updates for another repo, uncomment its line in the config file. Finally, we have to specify how often it should run updates. Open this file path in a text editor and edit it so it looks like this. Now, type sudo systemctl restart unattended upgrades. Great, now unattended upgrades are set up for your Ubuntu or your Debian server. Now, the process for automatic updates is much simpler on Red Hat based systems. Simply visit your cockpit management console at server IP colon 990. From there, navigate to software updates. It'll take a few seconds to refresh the package information and then you'll get a screen just like this. To enable auto updates, simply toggle the switch on the on position. Then you can choose whether you want to apply all updates or just security updates, along with what day of the week and what time to update. On Ubuntu systems, you can also enable something called canonical live patch, 
which can install imported patches to the Linux kernel without requiring a restart. To do this, visit the Live Patch website and sign in with your Ubuntu One account. Then, click to get your Live Patch token to receive your activation token. Finally, type sudo snap install canonical live patch to install it. After installation, type snap list and make sure it's installed. Finally, type canonical live patch enable with your token, replacing token with your authentication token from earlier. It will then say successfully enable this device with your machine token. To remotely administer your server, you're likely using Secure Shell, or SSH. Although SSH is encrypted and inherently secure, the default settings may leave your machine vulnerable. Because of this, it's recommended to tweak the configuration and change some settings to make your server more secure. Firstly, you should disable root login over SSH. The root user can be used to perform potentially dangerous tasks on your system, so it's considered best practice to disable root login. To do this, open up the SSH config file shown in your text editor. Then, edit the line with permit root login so that it says permit root login no. Then, save the file and type systemctl restart sshd to put your new config into action. Another thing you can do to tighten up SSH connections is to only use SSH keys. SSH keys are pairs of public and private keys, which are used to authenticate SSH connections. They are much harder to brute force than passwords, so they provide a higher level of security. To use SSH keys, we must first create a key pair on the client machine. On Linux or Mac OS, simply open up a terminal and type the command shown. Then, copy the public key to the server by typing this command, replacing user with your username and server IP with your server's IP address. On Windows, we can use PuttyGen to generate SSH keys. To generate a key pair, open PuttyGen and click on Generate. Move your mouse around to generate randomness. After the keys have generated, save the private key in a safe location and copy the public key. Then, open an SSH connection on your server and type the following commands. Then, open the authorized keys file and paste the contents of your public key file there. Finally, to log in using SSH keys, enter your server's IP in PuTTY and click on SSH auth. Click to browse for your SSH key and select your SSH key from the menu. Finally, click open and enter your username. The key will authenticate with your server and automatically log you in. Another thing you can do to tighten up SSH connections is to install fail to ban. Fail to ban automatically rejects connections from IP addresses which have tried to brute force your SSH. To install fail to ban on a Debian or a Ubuntu system, type sudo apt install fail to ban. After it installs, verify that it's running by typing sudo fail to ban dash client status. If your output is similar to this, your fail to ban client is working. To install on a Red Hat based system, we first need to enable the optional Apple repository. To do this, type sudo yum install apple dash release. After this, type sudo yum install fail to ban. Then enable the systemd unit by typing sudo systemctl enable fail to ban. Now type sudo fail to ban dash client status. If you get a similar output to this, your fail to ban client is working and your server is protected against brute force attacks. You can also change the config files in fail to ban, such as the number of failed attempts before a ban, or how long a ban should last. To see a full list of config variables and how to set them, go to the fail to ban docs link down below. Security Enhanced Linux, also known as SE Linux, is a Linux security kernel module which controls access to different applications, processes, and files on a system. It uses security policies, which are a set of rules that tell SE Linux what can or can't be accessed by certain programs, to limit the impact of compromised services or misconfigurations. To learn more about SE Linux, visit the link in the description. SE Linux is included and enabled by default on the latest releases of Red Hat Enterprise Linux, CentOS, and Fedora systems. To install SE Linux on a Ubuntu or a Debian system, type the command shown on screen. After it's finished installing, 
type reboot to restart your system. After your system boots back up, type sudo se status. If by default, se Linux will be enabled, but in permissive mode, which simply logs policy violations. To enforce the security policy until the next reboot, type sudo set enforce one. Now that SE Linux is enforcing, we need to allow some programs and services access through SE Linux. To allow the Apache web server through SE Linux, type this command. To allow SMB, a Samba server, through SE Linux, type these two commands, making sure to replace path to share with the path to your Samba share. Now, to permanently enable SE Linux so it isn't reset on shutdown, we have to edit the config file. Open this file path in your editor and change the line to se linux equals enforcing. Even if you follow best practices and attempt to tighten security on every attack vector, you'll still leave some things open to attacks or exploits. Linus is a tool that helps you see security vulnerabilities that you aren't able to spot on your own. Linus performs an extensive health scan of your system to find pot potential security vulnerabilities and general optimizations for your system. To install Linus on Ubuntu or Debian, type sudo apt update and then type sudo apt install Linus. To install on a rel based system, type sudo dnf update and then sudo dnf install Linus. To check if Linus is actually installed, type sudo linus show version. After it gives you the version number, you can run your first system audit by typing sudo linus audit system. After a few minutes, the audit will be complete. Although the output may seem like a whole bunch of random stuff, we'll break it down and take a look at it in a meaningful way. So scroll up in your terminal until you see a divider that says linus results. All of our relevant info is under here. The first thing you'll see are warnings, which are very important and should be addressed immediately. Under these warnings are suggestions. There will likely be hundreds of suggestions, and you don't have to implement all of them, but I still recommend taking a look at them and implementing the ones that you can. At the bottom of the Linus report, you'll see a hardening index, which is on a scale of 1 to 100. You also see some of the other metrics, like the number of tests performed and the number of plugins enabled. After finishing the audit, you should implement all of the warnings and as many of the suggestions as possible to harden your system fully. Now, there are a few other things you should consider doing to tighten up your server security, including full disk encryption, which can help protect important data even if your server is hacked. Usually, you choose this option on a fresh operating system install. A few other things to keep in mind are to frequently monitor access and usage logs to pick out unwanted traffic and to always have working backups in case of an attack. You also can only forward necessary ports on your router to provide network-wide security. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment if you have any suggestions. See you all in the next one.